Welcome back into the studio. Just a very quick video, but something talking about a subject that's really very important. Now, before I've talked about tonal value and colors and all those important things, this time I want to talk about edges because it's something that I see lots of, well, pretty much virtually every beginner make mistakes on and also novices and beyond that as well. So what do I mean by edges? Well, I'll show you this drawing I did a while back for my um, Patreon art channel lessons, and it looks pretty realistic. But when I zoom in on the edges, obviously this is larger than life size now, but look how soft the edges are. Everything has a bit of a blur to it. There's no halo effect, mind, be careful when you're your uh, blending you can get a kind of a halo effect around there um, but notice the eyes are in sharp focus and nose is in sharp focus but when we start looking at things like the top of the head there's a slight blur to it okay same with the outer edge of the uh, body as well so what do I mean when I say if a beginner puts hard edges all around it has what I call a cutout appearance. It looks fake. It looks like you've cut the, the animal out of, say, a magazine or a book and just pasted it randomly on a background. So what I've done here to show is I've just used the one of the Photoshop tools to cut around the edge of the uh, dog, very crudely done, and then paste it on the background a little bit bigger so it covers this, but just so you can see what I mean about the cutout effect. So here we go. Do you see now the top of the head is a very sharp edge? Let's zoom in a bit. All around here, both ears are um, cut out as well. You see you've got that sharpness to it. Do you see what I mean when I said it looks like it's now cut out of a magazine and no matter how good the inner part of the drawing is, it won't work right, it'll look fake because of that outer edge. Let's get rid of it again. Do you see now what I mean about the softening? Sometimes it's very, very slight. I'll put it back on. Look at the top of the head. You see, that's where I see beginners make the mistake of all the time. Perhaps not as extreme as this, but I wanted to, you know, hammer it home that the cutout effect is not what you're after. This is another one of the drawings I've recently completed and it's a pretty good example to show you how you can use hard and soft edges to create recession as well. So let me zoom in on here. If we look at the eagle's head, you can see we've got a fairly hard edge on the feather. It's not too hard. It's really hard then around the beak, defined, but look at the background, everything is super soft. No detail at all. This bit of foliage, bottom left hand corner, that's got a bit more contrast to it. It's a bit darker in places, but still soft. So that's given the effect it's quite far away, but it's closer than the mountains. Okay, so that's another example. Let's fit that back on the screen. So you see, I've got fairly soft edges around the edge of the feathers. Sometimes things are hard edged, like these uh, feathers on the end of the wings, in comparison to say the feathers on the chest. Let's look at it, something else. Fit this on the screen. So an orangutan baby I did a while ago. Notice I've got this is, this is quite an atmospheric, um, almost surreal look to it. I wanted a dreamy look to it. So I used hard and soft edges a lot. Hard edges for the eyelashes and around the eyes, some of the wrinkles, but then softening out even just, you know, an inch or two from the eyes, is starting to soften on that edge of the head. You can imagine how uh, it would have lost the feeling I was after if I'd created a hard edge like I showed on that dog. 
it softens then the edges even more as you go to the hand, to the arm, to the elbow. That all adds to that dragging you in to establish the centre of interest as the face, as the head. So also you can use hard and soft edges there. Now you can also um, really ramp up that effect. Now I, I did this reference photo looked quite a bit different. It was very muted didn't have this type of lighting effect on it um, much more was in focus but I could have increased the blur if you look at the hand okay that's how it is now I could have increased the blur to attract even more attention to the head create even more of a um, a dreamy kind of look to it okay and that's that's down to the artist and personal preference but that's once again how you use hard and soft edges and you create the softness by blending with your fingers or blending with the pencils. You know, it's just creating, as I said, softness, not much contrast between areas. When you look at it sharp, you can see there's lots of contrast and hard edges, which we blend out when you want it blurred. Let's have another look. But there are some subjects, and this is a photograph I took a short while ago in a butterfly uh, zoo some subjects do have a crisp hard edge now it could be birds feathers it could be the edge of a flower it could be a butterfly as in this case and when I zoom in you can see it's a crisp hard edge okay obviously that's zoomed in extremely large but that's the kind of time you could use it but look at the leaves in the background so the only other thing in focus is where the butterfly is standing, right on that exact part. Even the back legs of the butterfly are very blurred. Even the one antenna compared to the other one. Okay, let's have one last look. This is another photograph I took. Once again, it's showing you about hard and soft edges. So on the nose, the chin, we've got softness from the fur edge, okay, so animals with fur is generally a softer look to it, as you can see on the cheek, even on the chin, we've got hard edges, but fine, thin edges, just on the whiskers, on the nose, on the eyelashes, but as we come back down the neck, notice it's starting to blur. Okay, until as we go further and further back, look at this part of the body. It's really, really blurry. In comparison, if I just go across, it's getting sharper, 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 perfectly sharp on the chin. Now I've got lots of videos and demos. You can see me um, creating my hard and soft edges on every one of my videos. But to train your eye so you see it yourself, look at lots of photographs. Deliberately search out the hard edges, search out the soft edges, and apply that to your artwork. Because that really is, after tonal value, so the light and darks, that's probably the next thing I see beginners uh, make the biggest mistake on. Hope you've found that educational and you've picked up some tips and I'll see you all on the next video. Hi, my name is Jason Morgan. I've been an artist for over 25 years and if you want to improve your artwork really fast and end frustration, I think my art channel is just for you. So on this video, I'm just going to talk about my Patreon art channel and show you a selection of videos that's on there. Now as my channel has been going for over five years, I've got a real huge back catalogue of videos for you to watch and when you join you get access to all of the videos I've previously done on the tier you join at but so that could very well be hundreds of hours worth of videos and I have subjects from the very beginner all the way up to super advanced so I'm just going to scroll through a few of those on the screen just so you get an example an idea of the type of things that I've got on there and remember I've got 109 pastel videos, 31 oil videos, and 14 other ones like charcoals and some colored pencils as well in there. And each video goes from start to finish. The videos go through all the steps from the drawing 
all the way through to the final completion as well. So I've also got very dramatic subjects. I've got things like pet portraits and realism, wildlife, leopards, cheetahs, orangutans, and also subjects in the natural environments as well. And some more unusual things. It's not always about furry animals. So I've got some reptiles, frogs, the earth, even churches, but it is mainly uh, wildlife that is on there. These are just a few extra ones I put on as well. So even a human portrait and a couple of landscapes too. So it really doesn't matter whether you're a beginner, novice or really advanced. I've got lots and lots at each level, over one and a half thousand members on my Patreon art channel and many, many of them had never picked up a pencil or a brush before and they're really surprised and amazing their families and friends with what they can create now in such a short time. And I also show you exactly how I do my most advanced work as well, which is something artists don't often share. Now that was just a few of the pastel videos I've got on there and here's a few oils as well just so you get an idea of that. Now it doesn't matter if you're only into pastels or only into oils. You will learn from each of the videos uh, that's actually on there. And there's also videos on other very important things like composition, basic digital editing, how to print your reference photos and how to take really good ones as well and also new reference photos each month. And as well as all of that, you also get access to our secret Facebook group for members only. And virtually every one of the members thinks it's the nicest, most supportive group they've ever joined. Now, finding all of those videos is super easy. I've got a, a companion website, so with just one click, you can jump to all of the videos you want. Now, hundreds of hours worth of videos it doesn't cost hundreds of pounds or dollars you can join from anywhere over the world and it just costs from four dollars per month so roughly one dollar a week and there's no contract you can leave and come back whenever you want and you can go up and down all the tiers when you want as well hope that's a useful video and i'll see you all again real soon